In evolutionary psychology, there is often talked about a mismatch uh, between our modern day of living and that one of our ancestors. And that life changed over these last years so rapidly that we didn't have the time to adjust. Because if you look at the numbers of depression, they're rising. And, you know, of course, there are multiple reasons for that. One, uh, obvious reason is that we diagnose it more you know we are on the lookout for it way more so of course you will have an increase right besides that th that's just one part of the story right if you look at rich countries it's quite weird in a way that even their depression is still uh, rising we live in the best time ever compared to years ago we can treat so many illnesses so well there's endless amount of food there's shelter there is everything is provided for us so it's kind of weird that, to then think that rich countries still have, even though they have everything, depression is still quite a big issue there. And that's the whole notion of the mismatch, that maybe we aren't adapted. You know, we haven't adapted to our modern day life and that everything changed way too fast. And therefore our brains aren't able to handle this this modern day of life. Now, Dr. Stephen Ilardi, who is a, a professor of clinical psychology, developed a 14 week, six step program to treat depression based, uh, I mean, created around the notion that there is a mismatch. So he looked back at our ancestors to see what did they do that we don't do uh, much anymore, created then those six steps out of it. And, uh, let people run through it for 14 weeks. And he achieved a 75.3 success ratio, which is insane. So what are those six steps that were in that 14 week program? Well, that's what we are going to cover here in this video uh, with two more that I like to add that I think are really, really essential as well to include, to improve your mental health. So the first one is sunlight exposure. That's what he did. He let people way more into the sun, way more outside. Uh, if you think about our modern life, we spend so much time inside. I mean, there are people who almost don't leave the house. You almost don't have to if you want. You know, you can order all your food from your smartphone, all your shopping, everything basically can be done from out your house. You don't have to leave. We're so much just inside a building away from sunlight. And sunlight exposure is super, super important. It helps with serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter very important to make you, you know, feel happy and feel good. It's, it's incredible how many people lack vitamin D. Reduced sunlight exposure has also been linked with SAD, which is seasonal affective depression. Now with each uh, step, you know, that we're gonna cover that Dr. Steven Hilardi did, I wanna also add a couple of practical tips uh, to make this video also actionable, right? So you don't alone have the information, but to give you some ideas how to actually incorporate these things in your life. Uh, but first, a, a little side note. I actually did on the Inner Path Seekers podcast an interview with Dr. Melissa Lamb, who is the uh, one of the founders of PARX, uh, which is basically a, well, a program where physicians prescribe nature to their uh, patients. Uh, and if you're just curious to learn way more about the, uh, the psychological and physiological and physical benefits of being outside, then definitely check out that interview that I did with Dr. Lem. Uh, in the description, I will put a link to check out the episode. Now, here are a couple of practical things to incorporate more uh, sun exposure or, you know, to, yeah, to have that more in your life. One is, I mean, well, a vitamin D supplement, right? Uh, very easy. You can, of course, first get some blood work done and see how essential it is. But a vitamin D supplement, a very easy one to do. Another one is, you know, pin down every week, for example, or every month, uh, a hike with friends. A moment where you're going to go outside with friends or alone uh, to be in nature. Book it in advance, right? Every week already put it in your calendar when you're going for a hike or every month where you're going to do it 
so it is already there in your calendar. Now in general they say it's optimal to have sun exposure for 5 to 30 minutes a day without by the way sunscreen as the sunscreen may actually block the body's ability to absorb the UVB rays to effectively make vitamin D. All right so that's also that's uh, maybe good to know uh, but what you can do is very easily eat your breakfast outside or eat your lunch or dinner outside in spring or summer very easy to do uh, even in in winter or fall when there's a good day eat it outside instead of inside or if you work at home from your laptop sit more outside you know work more outside if you can do that for at least 5 to 30 minutes a day that's already a great start to in increasing more sunlight exposure and having that more in your your life and number two, the second step is to consume more omega-3 fatty acids. Now, there's actually been shown to be a link between depression and a lack of omega-3 fatty acids. It isn't exactly understood, I mean, completely why, uh, although there's been suggested, I mean, several mechanisms have been suggested. Uh, let's go through a couple of them. So one of the reasons would be brain structure and function. Omega-3 fatty acids are crucial for maintaining the structural integrity and optimal function of brain cell membranes. They are particularly abundant in areas of the brain associated with mood regulation, such as the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus. A deficiency in omega-3s could potentially affect neuronal signaling and neurotransmitter function, which may contribute to mood disturbance. Uh, a second one is neuro neurotransmitter activity, omega-3 fatty acids play a role in the synthesis and function of neurotransmitters, including serotonin and dopamine, which are key regulators of mood. So low levels of omega-3s could potentially disrupt the balance of these neurotransmitters, leading to symptoms of depression. Uh, another one would be neuroplasticity. Omega-3 fatty acids are involved in neuroplasticity, uh, the brain's ability to adapt and reorganize in response to experiences and environmental changes. Adequate levels of omega-3s support synaptic plasticity, neuronal growth, and uh, the formation of new connections in the brain, which are important for resilience to stress and maintaining emotional well-being. Uh, now, a, a couple of practical uh, ways to do that is, of course, also very simply to uh, use a supplement to have more omega-3 in you that way. Of course, you're just making conscious diet choices by incorporating more chia seeds, flax seeds, nuts like walnuts or fish, you know, like salmon, mackerel or sardines in your diet uh, because they are... Uh, well, they're rich in omega-3. If you are vegan, then taking a plant-based DHA or EPA supplement, you can also do that, right? So there's some options as well. Okay, and the third one in the six-step program is exercise. Uh, this probably doesn't come as a surprise, as it's widely known uh, known that exercise does a great deal of many good for us as well as improve our mental health. Now some of the reasons why uh, exercise has an effect on our mental health and you know such as depression is the release of endorphins. Uh, exercise stimulates the release of endorphins which are neurotransmitters in the brain that act as natural painkillers and mood elevators. Another reason is that exercise also helps to reduce the levels of stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline in the body. Uh, another one is exercise can increase the production of neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine and norepinephrine which are known you know to regulate mood. Now let me give some practical tips um, to improve or to add more exercise in your li life uh, by starting with one that not alone goes for this one but for the past ones that I shared and the ones that I will share is to um, try to find things that you can, you know, incorporate more than just one uh, step out of these six steps or eight, you know, things in, in total uh, to improve your mental health. And what I mean, for example, is, so, okay, exercise is great, you know, to improve your mood, to improve your mental health, sunlight exposure as well. So what you could do is in the summer, go for a run outside. And to add a third one, to it that's to you know if you join a running club or, or you know a running meetup then you are also incorporating social contact 
uh, which is actually the next one after this. Uh, so you'll be doing three things in one. Try to see how you can incorporate more than one thing in an activity. Now, another practical tip that I think is a really, really good one. So most people, when they exercise, their main priority is to get in shape, right? You should flip that with fun. Fun should be number one. For example, I love climbing. I, I, I don't climb because I get in shape from it. That's not my reason why I started climbing. I started climbing because, or I continued climbing because I loved it. I thought it was super fun. And as a bonus, I got in shape. That is the byproduct of it. If you have something, a sport that you just, that you find fun, that is really just a hobby, something that you will do in your free time, the byproduct will be that you will get in shape. Paintball, right? That could totally be a sport actually, super fun. You're running around like crazy. So for sure, you will lose some weight from that. Um, and with that also improve your mental health. Uh, and also there, it's a team sport. So you're also, and you're outside. So you got some sunlight exposure and you are with other people. Great, right? Great combination. I will put in the description some other sports suggestions, uh, you know, to just give you some ideas to explore and to think about or just search on the internet for fun sports. The great thing is if you find it fun, it's way more easier to motivate yourself to go and do it. Because again, it's just, it's fun. <laughs> and the fourth step which I already mentioned uh, <laughs> in the previous one, is social interaction. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients uh, around mental health. I see every year around spring, summer, especially summer, a drop in clients. And it isn't actually so hard to see why. Uh, it's great weather. So there's reasons to go outside, there's vitamin D, um, there's so much more to do in summer. You know, there's festivals, there are parties, there's uh, plenty, plenty of things to do during summer. So it gets people also to go out and do things with friends, which are all incredible ingredients uh, that we covered here already. So it's no wonder that there is a drop every time during summer because people are doing everything uh, more right during summer than in winter, and uh, that's why. I mean, we live in a time where things have become, in a way, too easy. You don't need to leave the house even for your groceries. We are a lot on our phones. There is an endless amount of entertainment to be found on streaming services. Many people can work from the comfort of their own couch, and uh, it can be truly challenging to have meaningful social interactions. Now, all these things push us to a more solitary living. You can see that there is a mismatch happening, right? We are naturally built to be social. Even if you're a very introvert person, we need social contact, uh, but it is, we, yeah, it, it's crazy how less uh, social contact has become, especially if you compare it to years ago, and especially to our ancestors, where they were always living in tribe, always, being in a way social and knowing uh, each other, knowing the people they can trust and count on and who is who. Regular social interaction is associated with higher levels of happiness and life satisfaction. Studies have shown that individuals with robust social networks tend to live longer than those who are more isolated. Strong social ties have been linked to a lower risk of cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure and other chronic conditions. Uh, yeah, having a network of friends and family provides emotional support during tough times helping to elevate stress and anxiety and, of course, depression. Social connections give individuals a sense of belonging and purpose which can improve self-esteem and overall mental well-being. My biggest practical tip here is that I feel that we need to create great excuses or good excuses to hang out with friends and with people. We don't tend to so easily just go and sit next to our neighbor, you know, uh, go to their house and just say hello. Uh, there needs to be some occasion, some reason why you are going for a visit. Uh, I can't speak for every country around the whole world that that is the case, but at least in the Western world, 
uh, we live so isolated. Everyone is on their own. A great practical tip is that you need to create great excuses to hang out with each other. So for example, uh, out of my own personal life, every month I've scheduled with a group of friends to go to a public sauna. Every month we have planned that to do that. And it's in a way a great excuse for us to come together. You know, it's something uh, that we all like. It's great for our health. We catch up, we talk about business, we talk about life. We talk about, well, yeah, things that we like talking about. But at the same time, what we're doing is spending quality time as a group together and we are maintaining that, that friendship. Or do something as going to a meetup, like a board game meetup that is happening every Saturday night. That's also amazing. And it's a great excuse to, in the end, just, you know, you're playing a board game, but at the end, you're spending time together with people. That's the essence of it, why it feels so good. Another one is to volunteer. I mean, this is also a great way to build friendships and to maintain connection. Uh, plus as well, if it's uh, some volunteer work on a subject that you greatly care about, it can also provide a sense of purpose and meaning in your life uh, that the people who are also volunteering there will likely feel as well. So that's an amazing combination. Another one is to join a sport team. So if it's, um, I mean, going on the previous one of exercising, if it's one that you find as a main priority fun and it's a team sport, great combination as well, right? Because together as a team, you care about something that you hopefully all find fun. Uh, you have a common goal. That is so, I mean, that feels great to have. All right, and the last one is to get a pet, like a dog. Now, don't just get a dog solely to become happier. Uh, there needs to be a space, you know, an environment where the dog can be happy too, uh, and where you are in a place that you can take care of another animal. But it has been shown often that people who are depressed, who have a dog, something that they need to stand up for gets them to do things in their day uh, and also gets them outside, you know, gets them some of that sunlight exposure. And uh, it's way more easier. Uh, I mean, this happens often that people who are walking, who don't know each other, walking with their dog, they stop because the dogs are playing with each other. They start a conversation. So it's a great and easy way also to get in contact with other people and that builds on the social interaction and social connection. So yeah, as in a way funny as it might sound, getting a dog can actually be a great uh, thing. Again, if you also, first of all, look at the, the well-being of the dog, right? Uh, but it can be a great way to also, well, to reduce depression and uh, your mental health in general. All right, number five is to keep your mind occupied. So depression is closely linked to a toxic uh, cycle called rumination, uh, which is basically where you are constantly dwelling on the past and on mistakes and you just keep dwelling on them forever and ever. Now, while we all can undoubtedly benefit from self-reflection and learning from our mistakes, excessive or chronic rumination can become incredibly painful and plays a large role in depression. I mean, some depressed people spend hours per day ruminating, going over the same unbearable thoughts, causing their depression to spiral even more out of control. Now, you can only ruminate when your mind isn't occupied with something else. Uh, so if you are alone at home watching TV, that's a great moment to ruminate. Happens many times then. Uh, or you are stuck in a uh, traffic. Many people ruminate there too, or that can easily happen there as well. Or at work when nothing is happening. Uh, these are moments where your mind isn't occupied with something else. And that's where rumination often can happen and many people aren't actually aware that they're doing it. They aren't aware that they're just spiraling down in this negative uh, cycle of toxic uh, rumination of just negative thoughts of the past. The first step is in a way to recognize that you are doing that and to know the triggers when it's most likely to happen. So for example, if you know 
that it happens often when you are going to work in your car. That's good, right? That you know, okay, it happens there often because then we can start thinking about some practical ways to handle that situation. And again, uh, knowing what I said, you only can ruminate when your mind isn't occupied with something else. All right, let's go through some more practical things that you can do to stop ruminating. Uh, listening to music, you know, when you know that you're ruminating, listen to music, your favorite music. Listening to a podcast, uh, like <laughs> the Inner Path Secrets podcast. Great podcast. <laughs> Talking with a loved one can be also a great thing when you can see or feel that you're ruminating. Watching videos or reading books about your passions or interests. Social interaction, uh, especially in a group setting. Going to a public sauna or doing board game events uh, or going to a board game event. Uh, exercising, you know, go for a walk, for a run, uh, go to the gym, do yoga, go climb. Also, that's a great thing because your mind is again occupied. And when your mind is occupied, you can't ruminate. All right, then the sixth step in Dr. Stevens Ilardi um, program is to create uh, healthy sleeping habit habits. That probably doesn't come so much as a surprise either. Don't underestimate how much your life can change by just having a healthy sleep routine. It's crazy. I mean, almost everyone, I mean, almost everyone basically can testify to, you know, when they slept a couple of hours less that they are the next day way more emotional, way more cranky, easily just angry and annoyed. And that's just from a couple of hours uh, of lack of sleep, right? If you do that consistently, then you will develop some serious mental health issues. Sleep problems and sleeping disorders have been on the rise. Sleep apnea, sleep, I mean, insomnia, they have been increasing. Insomnia and stress are very closely uh, linked and <laughs> stress is, I mean, yeah. So many people are completely stressed out. Sleep apnea and overweight, closely linked. And what do you know? Around the whole world, there are many people with weight issues, with too much weight. Many people push sleep away as not important, uh, or they drink caffeine to compensate, but only making it worse because they, because of the caffeine, they can't sleep so well the next night. Or they say like, oh, I will sleep when I'm dead. Not knowing how much of a hell you're actually creating by pushing away sleep and not taking it serious to do something about it. And also again, uh, sleep problems and depression very, very closely linked together. Uh, so if you want to improve your mental health, take your sleep hygiene serious. Now, I actually interviewed not too long ago on the Inner Path Seekers podcast, Dr. Michael Bruce, who is a clinical uh, psychologist and known as the sleep expert. Uh, and we talked in depth about sleep and how to improve it naturally. Uh, so if you care about improving your sleep, you will gain more information in that interview, but also uh, we go through a range of things that you can do to improve your sleep quality. Uh, in the description, I will put the link to the episode so you can check it out or, you know, just search for Inner Path Seekers or whichever podcast app uh, that, that you like to use and you'll find the podcast and just scroll uh, through the episodes to find uh, the one with Dr. Bruce. Now, let me go through some practical things already. Uh, first one is only use your bed for sleeping. Another one, create a consistent sleep schedule. And I mean, this might be things that you've heard many times already. Uh, there aren't really secrets. Uh, many of the secrets are already out there. You probably already know them. The true secret is applying it. It's, it's doing it. That's really the true secret for many things in life. Yeah, create a consistent sleep schedule. Uh, this is likely one of the most important things uh, that all too easily also isn't taken serious. Also in the interview, Dr. Bruce will go more in depth into why it's super important. Another one is, you know, avoid napping during the day. Um, that can actually disrupt uh, your sleep because you're less tired because you already did sleep a bit. Optimizing your bedroom is a very, very, very important thing to actually take some serious time. Like, okay, 
how can I improve my current bedroom even more? Uh, and one way would be to keep it cool, have some air condition, have a, a fan, uh, have you know, something to, you know, uh, curtains to block the sun so it's not heating up your room. Uh, but having a cool room is very, very, very good to sleep better. Um, a dark bedroom, right? Have curtains that completely block out lights, not just, just curtains that, yeah, let in a lot of lights. Uh, because that disrupts sleep as well. Uh, avoid caffeine after the morning. Um, yeah, <laughs> don't, I mean, caffeine stays in our body for I think about eight hours, so it stays in our body quite long. Don't drink it right before you have to go to bed uh, or, or eight hours before you're going to bed. If you live in a city, our modern day life, because of, I mean, noise, is everywhere. There's way more noise than our ancestors ever had to deal with. There's planes, there's, if you live in a city, drills, a machine, I mean, road works and, and cars honking and, oh, and people talking. Yeah, people don't sleep great in cities because of so much noise. So one thing that you can do is use earplugs, right? Uh, but another thing is to buy a white noise machine. Uh, this is a very simple thing. Uh, if you live in a city, this can be great. This is a perfect solution because what a white noise machine do does is it creates noise, um, but it actually, that noise is the same frequency and it blocks out any other noise from outside that might have different fre frequencies. So if you have a consistent same frequency happening, some white noise, that a white noise machine makes, that really helps for us to not be constantly disrupted. Uh, so a white nose machine is a great investment uh, to have uh, in your bedroom. Okay, so those are the six steps um, from Dr. Stephen Ilardi. Uh, now, he actually wrote a book uh, called The Depression Cure, the six-step program to beat depression without drugs. Uh, if you're curious to learn even more, that's a great, great book. To check out about you know the program that he developed now i want to add two more things that i feel are great ones in addition already to those to those six things that we just covered humor is something when we talk about you know how to improve our life uh, you, we talk about supplements exercise uh diets you know these are sleep optimization. These are things that we talk about uh, to improve our health and our mental health. But rarely do we add humor to it, even though there is so much research showing how good humor is for our mental health, but also for our physical health. So humor, I will add humor to this list to improve your mental health, to add that more into your day. Laughter triggers the release of endorphins, the body's natural feel-good chemicals, which can help reduce stress levels. Uh, laughter uh, may improve immune function by increasing production of immune cells and antibodies. Or another one, laughing can temporarily relieve pain by stimulating the production of endorphins, which act as natural painkillers. Laughter has also been shown for cardiovascular health. Uh, laughter improves blood flow and vascular function, which can lower blood pressure and reduce the risk of heart disease. Let me share two more, but there's so many more. Uh, muscle relaxation. A good laugh can help relax the whole body, relieving physical tension and stress. And social connection. I mean, sharing laughter strengthens social bonds and fosters a sense of belonging and connection with others. Uh, before I share some practical things, I also did on the Inner Path Seekers podcast an interview with the first humor engineer, Andrew Tarvin. Uh, who works, uh, I mean, who has worked with so many organizations like NASA, PepsiCo, uh, PNG, and various others uh, to help their productivity, to increase their productivity by adding more humor into the work field. I did a whole episode there about the benefits of laughing and how to have, uh, how to incorporate more laughter in your life. So if you're curious, also check out that episode, which I will put in the description to find. Here are a couple of practical things that you can do to uh, incorporate laughter more in your life. And the first one is to watch every day one uh, or two episodes of a sitcom. You know, Friends, uh, How I Met Your Mother, 
uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Kim's Convenience. There are The Office, there are so many great sitcoms to watch. And that's actually something that I do. Every, you know, before I end the day, uh, I will do some stretching. And while I stretch, I watch an episode of a sitcom. Or watch a stand-up comedy special with someone or alone. Laughter, just it's great for our mental health and our physical health. But that's already a great one to, to do. All right, the last one. But again, check out the episode that I did with Andrew Tarvin as we cover many more there. Um, is to experiment incorporating, you know, humor into everyday tasks. Uh, while cooking, you could listen to a podcast, uh, a funny podcast. While cleaning, you know... Pff, Come up with some silly dance moves while you clean. While at work in your email, just add a joke or, or write something more in a funny way. Or draw like a stick figure somewhere at work. Uh, well, in a funny way, right? Uh, with a nice message on it. These are just small things that can light up a day and make it a bit more silly and funny and less serious. And yeah, you don't have to do so many crazy things to, for that, right? Uh, these are, yeah, uh, experiment with it, right? Try to think of some ways to make mundane tasks through your day more fun. Reduce alcohol consumption and increase water consumption. And this might be actually a really hard one for some to hear, uh, especially how, uh, well, alcohol is such a big part in many uh, societies or in many countries it's just you know like in France a glass of wine super normal to have that with every dinner or throughout the day multiple times excessive amount of alcohol consumption isn't great for us it's actually really really bad uh, and it doesn't help for our mental health alcohol and drugs right alcohol is a drug but other drugs for sure as well can disrupt the balance of neurotransmitters in the brain such as serotonin and dopamine which play crucial roles in regulating mood alcohol and certain drugs can interfere with sleep patterns leading to disrupted sleep or insomnia another reason some individuals may turn to alcohol or drugs as a way to cope with stress anxiety or emotional pain however yeah these substances provide only temporary relief and can ultimately worsen mental health issues by masking underlying problems rather than addressing them effectively prolonged alcohol or drug use can result in serious physical health complications including liver disease cardiovascular problems and neurological damage uh, chronic health issues can further worsen feelings of depression and negatively impact overall quality of life and the last one substance abuse often co-occurs with other mental health disorders such as anxiety disorders or personality disorders the combination of substance abuse and underlying mental health conditions can lead to complex and challenging symptoms including persistent feelings of sadness hopelessness and despair now also here i did an extensive interview on the inner pad seekers podcast about alcohol uh with uh scott pinyard which is the head coach of this naked mind uh, that's a very uh known book actually written by annie grace so if you're curious to learn more about uh, alcohol and the effects it has on us but of course also what to do to drink less or to free yourself from drinking then check out that episode uh, which i will put in the description now to some practical things that you can already do uh, first one is you know go for non-alcoholic beverage uh, or a non-alcoholic beer or whatever the great thing is that there's actually quite a lot of uh, good options another one is to remove any alcoholic drinks from your home now if you feel like some depressive thoughts and you feel just really not good and unhappy and you have quite some alcohol or alcohol in your house that you drink now and then uh, removing it while also doing other things that we covered here in this video uh, so in addition to the other things will be a great thing for your mental health remove any alcohol drinks out of your house uh, can be really hard but actually, it can be easier than uh, just disciplining yourself into like, oh, I can only have it in the weekend. 
can actually be way more easier to just get rid of it all. Uh, educate yourself. I mean, honestly, a very practical thing to do is educate yourself more on this topic. So read books such as This Naked Mind to truly understand the impact of alcohol on you, uh, but also the psychological reasons why people drink. Because often at a party, you know, we grab to alcohol more because of the social thing, uh, but it doesn't per se make the party better nor our conversations. Uh, another one, a you know, practical one is, you know, have a goal, have a clear reason why you want to drink less or stop. Uh, it can help to, you know, create a goal, like a fitness goal, um, or like, you know, running a half a marathon, so you wanna be in top shape. Or for studies, you wanna be clear, your mind has to be clear and great and good for studying and consuming all this content. Often it's a habit actually, you know, uh, so it's like, Disrupting the habits uh, helps a lot and that can be done by having a goal, a reason why you stopped drinking um, for X amount of months. Once the habit is broken, yeah, you will feel less of a need to really grab to anything. And then of course, if you truly, I mean, struggle with um, drinking, then find support. There are great support groups, great communities. <clears throat> there are great programs out there to help you. Drinking can ruin our life in many ways, but also our mental health. All right, and those are the eight things that uh, I can highly recommend to improve your mental health and to maintain your mental well-being. Uh, it isn't a thing to do just once in your life, but it's something, you know, these eight things that you should consistently maintain. Now, I would recommend if this is sort of an, uh, well, a new thing, if it's sort of a, a something that you wanna work on. Uh, on improving your mental health, to write down minimally three things uh, that you really liked that was shared here in this video, and to commit yourself to trying three months, everything you can to do incorporate those three things, you know, let's say three things in your life. You know, set a time on it to experiment. See it as an experiment. For three months, experiment to see how effective this will actually be and how much it could help your mental health. If at the end it does nothing, just let it all go. But very likely, if you take action on um, a couple of the things that were shared here, and you do that for three months consistently every day, you will see a change in your mental health. Now, to find all the episodes that I mentioned, check out the description. Uh, of course, you can also just search for Inner Path Seekers on whichever podcast app you like to use to find the episodes. Just scroll through the list and uh, you'll stumble upon them. All right, that's it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, you know, if you liked this video for more content, you know, more life education, uh, content about mental health, relationships, the body and brain, the mind. These are the things that we're covering here on Inner Path Seekers. If you're curious, you know, to step on this journey of seeking more answers about yourself and the world, yeah, then subscribe as uh, there are the interviews that we do with incredible guests uh, that <laughs> I mentioned some of them here in this video uh, and the videos and videos like this. If you like this content uh, or this video, then subscribe, put a thumbs up and uh, share it with people who uh, might benefit from this video as well. But with that, I hope to welcome you on another video. Bye.